Hi friends, today we're going to read Armadillo Tattletale by Helen Ketman. Let's start. In the bare bones beginning, Armadillo's ears were as tall as a jackrabbit's and as wide as a steer's horns. With such wonderful ears, Armadillo could hear anything and everything, and he loved nothing better than Edvis dropping on other animals and telling tales about what he heard. But as good as his ears were for hearing, they dragged in the dirt and stuck in the muck after a rain and always made him trip. Thus, Armadillo was the slowest of creatures. And since the other animals disliked him for telling tales, they beat him to the watering hole every day and forced Armadillo to scratch through the mud for a puddle of murky water to drink. It tasted awful and precisely made him sick. So, he drank as little as possible and was always thirsty. One day, as Armadillo stumbled around searching for a puddle, he overheard Egret whisper to Turtle, Blue Jay's feathers are looking a bit scraggly. I wonder if the poor bird is sick. I'll call on him tomorrow to see if I can be of help. But Armadillo went to Blue Jay first, twitching his little tail as he spoke. I heard Egret talk about you, he said in a sing-song voice. She thinks you're scraggly looking. Blue Jay squawked, and he brawled, and he squawked, and he quacked, and otherwise threw one humongous hissy fit. When Egret heard what had happened, she went straight away to Armadillo. What you told Blue Jay was not true. Anyway, my words were not for your ears, she scalded, and she pick-packed his ears good and proper and gave him the what for and the how come and the why not. Armadillo cried great big armadillo tears, and he promised never to tell tales again. But the next day, while searching the mud for a sip of water, Armadillo heard Muskrat and Butterfly talking, and he hid in the bushes to listen. Rattlesnake's rattles used to be terribly out of tune, but now they sound wonderful. She must be taking music lessons, said Muskrat. Armadillo tripped over to where Rattlesnake lay warming herself in the sun. He shifted his weight from foot to foot in an awkward armadillo dance. Rattlesnake opened an eye, and Armadillo grinned. I heard Muskrat talk about you, he said. Your rattles sound terribly out of tune. Rattlesnake rattled, and she prattled, and she fussed, and she crossed and otherwise through one humongous hissy fit. When Muskrat heard what had happened, he scurried to Armadillo. You twisted my words into something I did not say, he shrieked. Besides, my words were not for your ears. And he witch watched his tail at Armadillo and gave him the what for and the how come and the why not. Armadillo cried buckets of tears and he promised never ever to tell tales again. But the next day, while slogging through the mud looking for a drink, Armadillo saw Alligator and Blue Heron talking and he stepped behind a rock to listen. Toad's skin is looking so much better than it used to. I wonder if she changed her diet, said Alligator. 
Armadillo shuffled off to find Toad. I heard Alligator say your skin is ugly pluck, and you should go on a diet. He said with a twink in his eye. Toad hopped and she flopped, and she wailed and she wailed, and she otherwise threw one humongous hissy fit. When Alligator found out what Armadillo had said, he hurried to find him. Why did you tell Toad these things? I never said them. She snapped. Anyway, my words were not for your ears. She gave him the what for and the how come and the why not. And now, she said. I'll fix your ears so you won't be snooping around and telling tales again. And she opened her mouth and gnashed and clacked her big, strong alligator teeth, and then nipped and snipped and clipped at Armadillo's ears until there was nothing left but tiny, teeny, eensy weeny little ears. When she finished. Armadillo looked at his reflection in a puddle. His ears were so tiny. Then he started to cry. Oh, did he cry? He raised such a rusk that all the animals came to see what had happened. When they saw his ears, his new tiny, teeny, eensy weeny little ears, they started and they gawked and they whispered. Armadillo stopped crying. What? He asked, "What are you whispering?" Everyone gasped at Armadillo because, for the first time, he hadn't quite heard. It was not for your ears, anyway. Muskrat called out. Armadillo's face turned red. "I did not hear the whispers, but I heard that," he said, chasing after Muskrat. In seconds, Armadillo caught him. Did you see how fast Armadillo ran? Muskrat shouted. He didn't trip at all, added Blue Jay. Why is he so fast? Now we'll never be able to keep him away from the fresh water, said Rattlesnake. Armadillo felt his tiny, teeny, eensy weeny little ears. Fresh water! He shouted. That's just what I want. And it's fun to run fast. Then he danced and raced in circles and zigzags, all the way to the watering hole, where he drank as much fresh, clean water as he wanted. From now on, I will never be thirsty again. And he wasn't. He also stopped telling tales. For even though he could hear with his tiny, teeny, eensy weeny little ears, he couldn't overhear the other animals' conversations. To this day, armadillos have small ears. They always drink their fill of fresh water, and you may hide in the bushes and listen as long as you like, but you will never, ever catch an armadillo telling tales. The end. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.